Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. In today's video, we will be discussing seven tips for returning to piano study. This can be after a long hiatus of many years or possibly decades, or even a short-term hiatus. Maybe you took a month or two off and you're feeling a little lost and you wanna get back on track with your studies with very efficient practices, uh, efficient routines, and the best advice that you can uh, apply the best advice that you can to ensure success. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. I really appreciate it. I spend a lot of time preparing for these videos and also filming them and paying editors to help me edit these. It would mean a lot if you could do that to help the channel grow and be shared with more people. With that, let's dive into the first step. Step number one, I can't emphasize this enough. Have a coach or a support system of some sort. Now, some people simply cannot afford private lessons, so YouTube is their support system. Um, work as much as possible to change that situation, if that's you, uh, to be able to pay a private teacher for weekly lessons or even occasional lessons. That can help save you so much time and energy. Um, there's also a lot of online courses. I run an online course, uh, so this isn't a shameless pitch for mine. If there's another one that you've been eyeing, <laughs> go for it. But this is also very helpful. You can clean a lot of ideas from those who've been in your shoes before or those who've taught those in your shoes recently. Um, having taught for well over 20 years now, I've seen a lot of different situations that never challenged me personally that... I've had to be creative with and help students with. Similarly, on the flip side, a lot of my students haven't struggled with things that I've struggled with, but that I've taken to my teachers and they've helped me with. So having a coach and support system is critical in your progress, whatever form that might currently be. And I would encourage all of you, if possible, to seek private instruction whenever you're able to. Step number two when returning to piano, do not take on too difficult of material. Pretty much all of these steps are applicable to those who are currently studying music and aren't coming back to piano. But returning to piano, it's even more important, I feel like, to not be taking on really difficult material that's going to bury you. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people do. They, uh, or th that I see a lot of people make, they say, I was playing the Rachmaninoff third piano concerto 20 years ago. Let me start with that. Terrible idea <laughs> if you haven't played for 20 years. Uh, or I used to play 12 of the Chopin etudes. Well, maybe that was the case, but maybe we need to start with some Clementi sonatinas to get started, um, to get those fingers warmed up again and, and moving in the right way. So starting with easier material can be very helpful. I also have a video on YouTube that I'd like to recommend. It's called Pacing Your Repertoire Selections. Uh, you can check that out, a very old video that I've referred thousands of people to over the years. It's all about how to pace the choices you make with the repertoire you choose. For instance, I like setting short-term repertoire, uh, medium-term repertoire, and longer-term repertoire goals and making choices to actually include those in your current regimen. So I don't want you playing all six month long projects. I don't want the pieces that you're working on to all take six or possibly even 12 months. If it's taking longer than 12 months, it's too hard for you. Just, I mean, unless you're playing like the complete Beethoven sonatas, that would take longer than 12 months. But if it's a single piece, don't have it take longer than a year and ideally six months, unless you're playing at the very high level, uh, uh, the very highest of levels. Have a short-term piece, have a medium-term piece. Short-term could be a matter of weeks to a month. A medium-term piece can take one to three months. These are playing it smoothly, possibly memorized, possibly for an audience, and then a three to six-month piece. And you could extend that to 12 months if it's a really intense project. But do not start with material that is too hard. That's step number two when you're returning to piano. Step number three, slow practice is invaluable along with medium tempo practice. I actually have a whole video on medium tempo practice uh, and how valuable that can be. But when you're returning to piano, if you're playing something very basic, like, uh, I don't know, Bach Minuet. It's actually by Christian Petzold, this one. It's from the notebook of Anna Magdalena Bach. Mm -hmm. 
reviewing how the arm moves. So I'm not just isolating my fingers. And making a lot of unnecessary movements. Having there be a holistic experience going on. Shaping it. Focusing on your articulation. Maybe you need to slow this down. I have a whole tutorial on that piece if you're interested, and I also have many videos on how to move effectively at the piano and reduce tension if you need more help with that. But I can't emphasize enough when you're coming back to piano, don't rush into your old speeds. Start fresh, start slow. Let the speed take care of itself over time. It will. If you can do things well in a slow tempo, you'll be able to do them in a medium and fast tempo almost always. There are exceptions to that, especially when you reach for the highest speeds. Sometimes we need to employ a few extra strategies, which I also go over in a lot of my videos. But if you jump into fast tempos, you are going to inevitably, every person, I don't care how good you are, people will naturally induce tension into their playing which is going to halt your progress. It could cause injury. So be very careful with that. Start slow. Step number four, challenge yourself to get better at your weak spots. This is a fresh start. You're coming back to piano. So if you're a terrible sight reader, let's dedicate some time each day to sight reading. If you're really bad at memorizing, let's make a new commitment to memorize your pieces. If you're a slow player and you really struggle with speed, let's just set small, actionable goals to increase that speed. You don't have to play as fast as your favorite professional. Whatever your weakness is, this is a fresh opportunity to target those weaknesses and to take it one step at a time. Again, having that coach and support system can help you accomplish, accomplish those goals much quicker, but committing to actually improving on those weaknesses can be very therapeutic as you come back to your piano studies. Step number five, I've mentioned this on so many videos, but recording yourself is the most important thing you can do aside from just practicing and committing to lessons and spending the time. You will notice so much progress being made if you record yourself and listen back. By the way, it's brutal. No one likes to record themselves and listen back. I remember even Sergei Babayan, who I admire more than anyone, he said, I couldn't bear to listen to my Scarlatti CD for years. And then many years later, I listened and I thought, okay, that's pretty good. I was like, yeah, I'd say it's a little better than pretty good. It's incredible. But even he doesn't love listening to himself being recorded from from that story, that's what I would imagine. Perhaps he does. But um, if he's even showing a little apprehension, realize that us mere mortals uh, will obviously experience that too. I don't like to hear myself play either most of the time. I always say, I'll just wait till it's a little better to record. If you put the recording or the if you turn the microphone on and record yourself and listen back, even in the early stages, you will identify weak spots more quickly and be able to fix them more quickly, which will accelerate your progress. So I cannot stress that enough. Recording yourself is key when returning to piano. Step number six, this one's gonna make a lot of people uncomfortable. Perform for people, set performance dates and commit to them. Even if you weren't able to memorize perfectly, Maybe you put your music up there. Maybe you even have a really understanding audience. I made my student uh, do this. I said, turn your music over. She plays for a little piano club. And I said for the next one, because she was a little apprehensive about uh, performing uh, a certain piece. And I said, everyone at your piano club loves you. You've played really well for years. Um, some of her pieces were memorized, some weren't. But as we've embarked on her committing to memorizing her pieces more, she got nervous. And she's also playing harder material than she used to. So it's getting more challenging. I said, just put all your music, you know, all of them turned over and just explain to the audience, I might mess this up and I might need to interrupt the performance to turn the music over as this is freshly memorized. Please forgive me if I do that. Now, you're not gonna wanna do that in front of a huge audience. You wanna be doing those steps in front of, a family member or friend, or perhaps a situation like her piano club, a very comfortable, 
inviting, warm, understanding environment. You don't want to be doing this in a competition, of course. But those are steps that can help you um, make that progress and get more comfortable on stage because performing for people is very helpful to enjoying piano more. And a lot of people that I've taught, especially adult students, especially retired adult students for some reason, um, that aren't socializing as much with like their core group of uh, work uh, people that they used to work with, they get a little shy and they say, I'm just playing for myself. And that's okay. But I've noticed that the ones whose barrier I broke through of that stubbornness and I said, listen, just play for a friend for me. They come back and they're like, it went okay, but I'm less scared now. Or, oh, that went terribly, but I bet I could do it better again. Or, oh my gosh, what have I been so scared of? That went beautifully. No matter how it goes, performing for people will help you develop as an artist. It exposes something in your mind that just is not present when you're practicing. It puts an extra amount of pressure on you, which can, it's like a refiner's fire. There's a, a great story called the refiner's fire about how silver has to be purified so many times and the metal has to be beaten to make it pure. And then the blacksmith or silversmith, whatever it's called, uh, they say, how do you know when it's pure? He said, when I can see my reflection in it. It's a beautiful story. Um, performing is like a refiner's fire. Sometimes we're kind of lost. It's kind of like the dirty metal that you start with and putting yourself into that fire over and over again. It's not comfortable, but it refines you and it will refine your music and you will think more clearly and you will play better and you'll play more creatively. If you keep going back to that, you will get better at it it's very critical to perform for people. No matter how scared you are, it will help you. So that's step number six. Step number seven, perhaps the most important step when returning to piano is be kind and patient to yourself. And this isn't just important when you're returning to piano. Like I said, this whole list can be applied to people who are in the thick of it, who have studied for many years. But be kind and patient. This is especially critical when you're returning to piano because you're extra vulnerable. You're reworking on one of the most difficult skills a human being can engage in. They've done studies of pressurized instruments uh, where we have different dynamics. Um, there are so many areas of the brain that are engaged at doing this, at playing piano, you're playing with both hands, you're playing different dynamics. One hand has to be louder than the other. You're using your foot to pedal. You're doing all of these tasks. It's very taxing. I know I just <laughs> said that. Uh, it's very taxing on your mind and it's very difficult. So being kind and patient with yourself is critical and just enjoying the process you're going to have some really down days. I've shared my own weaknesses on this channel. There's been times where I've been so discouraged. I've walked off stage and said, I'm quitting piano. I wasn't so serious in saying that, but I felt like it in that moment. I thought this is so stupid. I've played for a few decades now and I'm still making mistakes in this piece or uh, on stage, I'm making these silly mess ups. Um, but you know what? I used that as an opportunity to go back and get stronger for the next performance. And I remember some of my best and worst performances happened consecutively. So don't let a bad performance get you down. You're just one performance away from doing something great again, or you're just one piece away or one lesson away from making the progress that you've looked to, uh, that you've been searching to make. I recently made a little YouTube short uh, video about um, underestimating versus overestimating your potential and your goals. We often overestimate what we can get done in a short amount of time and greatly underestimate what we can get done in a longer amount of time. So this idea of being patient with yourself and being kind to yourself ties right into that idea. Sometimes things will take a little longer, but then you're going to see unparalleled progress to anything you've ever done before when you least expect it. Um, I've seen that so many times in my life. I've struggled and struggled and struggled, and then I find a solution and it just works. 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can get it every single time now. It's so easy. Or I just have to focus on this one thing and then my hand will behave or the dynamics will behave more easily or I play this more cleanly or faster or uh, more thoughtfully. But it took a lot of searching to find that. Not everything with piano comes at the same rate. So be patient with yourself. I hope that has been helpful. Again, if you found any value out of this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video so it can be shared with more people. I hate that we have to serve that YouTube algorithm, but it is uh, the reality. So your help there is greatly appreciated. I'll leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to help take your playing to a higher level. These are practice techniques I use every day in my teaching and also in my personal practice. I'll also leave a link for two of my paid courses, Pro Practice and the VIP Masterclass series. Um, those go a lot deeper than this channel goes over. And finally, I will leave a link to my gear kit, all the gear I use in the studio to make these videos in case you're wanting to record yourself or improve the lighting or whatever it might be. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.